Well, hello YouTube, it's your girl Jane coming at you with another video. And as you can tell by the title, this video is going to be about 12 classic, timeless, beautiful fragrances that do not smell too mature. So if you guys are interested in seeing what my 12 picks are, then go ahead and just keep on watching. <laughs> All right, y'all, so first things first, stop what you're doing, stop, and leave me your scent of the day down below. I would love to know what you guys are wearing today or tonight whenever you are watching this video. Also, if you are new to my channel, hello again. My name is Jane. Welcome, and if you are returning, thank you so, so much for clicking back onto another video. We are truly growing this channel and I'm loving it. So continue to subscribe, you guys, share with your friends and let them know what we're doing over here. So if you have not already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos from Moi. Now let's hop into today's video because I have 12 gorgeous fragrances that smell timeless and classic to me and that's not Chanel, okay? And they just really give me that bad and bougie vibe, but also I feel like they'll stand the test of time. So let's just hop right in. So of course with all of these videos, I enjoy starting with my scent of the day, which I am happy to say this portion of the video is sponsored by Max Aroma. They sent me these first two fragrances, including my scent of the day. So I wanna thank you guys at Max Aroma for sending me these fragrances. So with that being said, I am going to talk to you guys about a new house that I really haven't heard anyone on YouTube talk about and I'm so happy that I have the opportunity to test this house out because I was actually very interested and my scent of the day is Saint Honoré from the house of Stephanie de Bruhine. This is a French house and this definitely gives me French girl vibes. This fragrance is absolutely stunning. First of all the bottle is absolutely beautiful. It's so classic and minimal. It's very chic which I love and this is unlike any fragrance that I have because I typically don't go for these types of scents. This fragrance to me is a sweet, very powdery, vanillic fragrance. It has this musky quality to it and it has this depth but creaminess from the woodiness. This fragrance opens up with heliotrope and tonka beans so you get that powderiness but also that nutty quality that tonka beans have and you also get that heliotrope which kind of comes off kind of almondy but a little bit doughy at the same time. I love the way that this fragrance opens. However, this is extremely powdery in my opinion so if you don't like sweet powdery fragrances you will not like this scent at all. I used to not really be much of a fan of powdery scents but I've learned that if it's on the sweeter side, if it has tonka beans and things like that, I tend to enjoy them. In the mid you get some leather and some vanilla so you get some sweetness from the vanilla but you also get this warmth and this depth from the leather and then in the base you get some musk and some sandalwood and so for me the base is where you get that creamy warm sandalwood but you also get that freshness from the musk so it keeps this fragrance airy without being too dark and deep but this also has some depth and it has a little bit of heft to it to where you can wear this in the fall and winter. I think this fragrance is definitely signature scent worthy as are most of these fragrances I feel so depending on what your style is will depend on what you would like but this fragrance is for my powdery lovers for my musky lovers that has like the sweet touch so if you enjoy Poudre from Narciso Rodriguez. I think you will really enjoy this fragrance. This really gives me French chic vibes. This gives me like kind of what I'm wearing. That's why I chose this to be my scent of the day. But this also gives me like a cozy and comforting sense of safety as well. I really enjoy this fragrance surprisingly. And I really want to check out this fragrance house more. So this is Saint Honoré. I think that's how you pronounce it. From the house of Stephanie de Bruhine. Now jumping into the second Stephanie de Bruhine fragrance that they sent over. I have Montiguin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Montiguin. I am not French y'all. I'm so sorry. Please correct me if I'm correct now I'm gonna start off with the way that the bottle looks I'm not much of a fan of this bottle because to me it looks dated I don't find this fragrance to look classic or chic I think it makes it look kind of less expensive these fragrances aren't too expensive but I find that the Saint Honoré package looks a bit more luxe and I like the details in this fragrance like how this cap is a magnetic cap and you can 
still see the gold trim you know like I like the way that this looks however the multi gain to me just looks a little bit dated and that's not to throw jabs at the brand I think she's transitioning over to that new label so that's a good move but yeah that's just my opinion just given my review as a consumer and as someone who really enjoys looking at fragrance bottles so enough with that now let's get into the fragrance this fragrance to me is a woody sweet rosy slightly aromatic fragrance it has some yellow florals and it also has a little bit of a woody touch to it as well this fragrance has a ton of notes like a ton of notes but what really sticks out to me is the geranium the ylang ylang this also has some patchouli some musk some vetiver and also violet so you really get this like musky powdery rosy type of scent but it has like patchouli this to me screams elegance this screams sophistication but in a more mature way i don't think that everyone would like this fragrance i don't think that this is super mature i wouldn't say that this is like an unwearable scent i find chanel number no. five to be extremely mature because of the aldehydes and just how it smells but this fragrance has like that vetiver that patchouli it has that deep earthiness to it so i find that people especially those who like extremely feminine scents won't like this fragrance i think that this scent is for those who enjoy smelling musky but also a little bit sweet but also earthy and woody at the same time this is a very polished and posh fragrance but i do find this to lean a little bit more on the mature side this is probably the most mature smelling fragrance in my lineup but it's absolutely beautiful i still enjoy this i would kind of reserve this for more special occasions like a black tie event personally because of how polished and posh this smelled or if i went to france or something for dinner like this to me is like a special occasion fragrance because of how sophisticated it smells this to me isn't necessarily my my style but I can appreciate the way that this fragrance smells this is Montagin from Stephanie Day Bruhin thank you again Max Aroma for sending over these fragrances and I do have a link for you guys if you are interested in anything from Max Aroma they have an amazing selection they offer samples and everything so you can test out fragrances that you think sound interesting that I've talked about and I think that you guys will really really enjoy them so thank you again Max Aroma for sponsoring this portion of the video the next fragrance we're gonna talk about to me is actually a a true classic this is a fragrance that is extremely timeless I started wearing this fragrance in high school and when I think back I'm like wow I smelled like a grown woman in high school and this is flower bomb the eau de parfum from Victor and Roth the OG they just came out with Ruby Orchid and I actually spoke about how I felt about Ruby Orchid and I'll leave that video up in the eye in the sky but the OG fragrance you guys if you haven't heard of it if you have not smelled it which I know most of us have I feel like people either strongly dislike it or they really really enjoy it so this fragrance fragrance to me is just a nice floral woody patchouli heavy fragrance it also has this musky quality to it as well this fragrance is absolutely stunning what really sticks out to me in this scent is definitely the patchouli that's in the base the musk but also the floral notes so you get like rose you get some freesia you get some african orange flower you get a lot of notes in this fragrance but you also get some bergamot in the top so when it opens up it opens up kind of fresh but it quickly quickly starts to dry down into those florals and I'm almost certain that this has osmanthus in it so I think that's what kind of gives it its sweetness but yes this fragrance is a classic to me it's timeless this is signature scent worthy this actually was my signature scent throughout high school like my junior and senior year I really really enjoyed this fragrance a lot a well let me not lie because I had like three fragrances that I loved in high school but this was one of them this was the one that I would pull out whenever I kind of wanted to like smell sexy in my opinion back then which is kind of cringy to think about now like a 17 year old saying she's sexy like ooh. overall this fragrance is stunning I find this fragrance to be extremely timeless and beautiful and classic so this to me is more of the modern classic fragrance and I think that you should definitely try this out or the new Ruby Orchid if you are interested because the flower bomb line they have bangers so this is flower bomb from Victor and Roth all right y'all so this next fragrance is actually a sandalwood based fragrance and this scent to me is classic this is one that is polarizing I don't think that people would love it especially if people enjoy more feminine targeted fragrances this scent to me is extremely sexy but it's also polished and sophisticated and elegant and timeless I think that this fragrance will not age at all and this scent is Santal blush from the house of Tom Ford this fragrance of course is a heavy sandalwood fragrance so you get this heavy woodiness you get this aromatic touch you also get this musky quality a little bit of a 
resinous touch from the amber and I also get this warm spiciness this fragrance is so beautiful I absolutely love this scent this is a very unique sandalwood this isn't a sweet fragrance I actually have another sandalwood fragrance that I'm going to talk to you guys about that is more on the sweeter side this to me is very gender fluid I find that all genders really enjoy this fragrance so one thing I really really love about this fragrance is how it opens it opens very spicy but it also has a fenugreek note I believe and that to me is pretty aromatic and so you get this spiciness but you also get this aromatic touch to it and then when the fragrance starts to dry down you get some ylang ylang which is a beautiful yellow flora i absolutely love that and you get some rose along with some jasmine and then in the base you get some benzoin you get some sandalwood of course and you get some musk so for me the benzoin kind of sweetens up the fragrance but it's not too sweet this fragrance overall to me is just a woody warm spicy fragrance like that's pretty much what i get but when it dries down deeper you do get a little sweetness you do get a little bit of a musky quality to it and it's not like a fresh musk but but it's like a musk that's kind of like warm and like cozy if that makes sense so this fragrance is absolutely stunning I love how this wears on the skin I do find this fragrance to be like a timeless scent and I've noticed that a lot of people who enjoy smelling expensive or exclusive you know those types of scents posh this is the fragrance that they tend to, to really enjoy now I have the older packaging the newer packaging looks like tobacco venise like that darker packaging but I think that with the darker bottle it kind of speaks to how this fragrance smells so this is Santal blush from Tom Ford and to me this is a very beautiful timeless scent. Now jumping into this next fragrance that I find to be very beautiful, classic, and timeless, we have Santal Complete from the House of Fragrance Dubois. Now I have a full review on this house and I'll leave that video up in the eye in the sky. If you guys missed it, I went in depth about all of the fragrances almost and the full bottles that I have. But this scent to me is absolutely beautiful. This is another sandalwood centric fragrance, but this goes in a different direction, which I love. This fragrance to me is a beautiful, sweet, creamy coconut. It also has this woody quality to it of course it has this musky quality to it but it also has a bit of brightness from the opening from the citrus so this is just really a nice fragrance this is definitely signature scent worthy just like Saint Honoré I find that these two are ones that you can definitely wear year-round and smell amazing and I love the way that the sandalwood smells in this fragrance along with that coconut it just makes the sandalwood very creamy and like delicious kind of leaning gourmand in my opinion I wouldn't fully say that this is like a gourmand fragrance like no but the sandalwood along with the coconut makes it gourmand like and in the opening you get that bright citrusy lemon and then when the fragrance dries down you get that powdery beautiful violet which I'm finding that I'm really starting to enjoy in fragrances along with some black pepper which adds that spice it kind of adds a little bit of warmth but not too much it's not too overwhelming it's not too overpowering and then in the base you get some sandalwood some musk and some vanilla along with some amber so you get a little bit of a resinous touch with that amber you get some muskiness from the musk and for me the musk again is like a more cozy musk it's not too fresh it's not too clean it's not soapy at all and then the vanilla adds that sweetness along with that creamy sandalwood which kind of complements with that vanilla and a little bit of that coconut that's in the top so this fragrance is beautiful to me I really enjoy wearing this scent again like I said I do have a full review on the house including this fragrance so I'm not gonna go too much in depth about this scent because like I said I have that for you guys but overall I find this fragrance to be classic I find it to be timeless and I find this to be gender fluid as well I find that this fragrance is going to be a staple in a lot of people's collection because it is very timeless to me and this is very versatile so I really enjoy wearing this fragrance and this is Santal Complet from the house of Fragrance Dubois so this next fragrance is one that is extremely sentimental to me and I'm gonna try not to tear up but it means a lot like it's that deep and this fragrance is nomad from chloe and you guys this fragrance is beautiful i think that people either love it or hate it they do have an absolute version which is a little bit different but this fragrance to me is just beautiful this fragrance reminds me of my pregnancy with my daughter if you don't know i have a two-year-old she's absolutely beautiful and she's the love of my life and this is the fragrance that i wore majority of my pregnancy and this just reminds 
reminds me of her and my vacation to Mexico. There's just a lot of memories tied to this fragrance in particular. When we did her gender reveal, I wore this fragrance. Like this fragrance is just my pregnancy and I'm, oh, I'm starting to get emotional, but this fragrance is beautiful. This isn't your, you know, everyday like feminine scent. So if you enjoy very feminine fragrances, this isn't the way to go. This to me is just a very beautiful, warm, woody, slightly aromatic scent. It also has a very deep earthiness to it along with some spice so it has this warm spiciness it has this ambery touch to it as well but overall i would say that this fragrance is like a woody earthy citrusy fragrance with a little bit of fruitiness so this scent opens up beautifully i really enjoy the opening of this scent it opens up with a note of mary bell plum which is a very unique but bright plum note it's very juicy as well and it adds sweetness to the fragrance but that's about it the citruses in the opening you get some bergamot you get some lemon you get some orange but then going into the mid you get some freesia along with some peach and some jasmine and then in the base you get some patchouli you get some amberwood you get some oak moss and really Really, the oak moss is kind of what steals the show but for me personally I really enjoy how this fragrance smells I think that the earthiness really grounds the fragrance and makes it extremely sexy but this also has a bit of like a cozy vibe to it as well like this scent to me is one that smells like a niche fragrance I would never expect Chloe to come out with a fragrance like this because of how unique it is there aren't many fragrances on the market that smell like this and still go in the direction of being very timeless and classic that's kind of how I feel about it maybe I'm biased but overall this fragrance is amazing I do find that I reach for this scent for more nighttime occasions in the spring and summer now I do enjoy wearing it during the day so this is definitely a signature scent worthy fragrance I would consider this to be my signature scent of 2019 because of how much I used it but now that my collection has grown I really like to save this fragrance for more special occasions because this scent to me just reminds me of my pregnancy and I always want to kind of associate my pregnancy with Zori with this fragrance so this is a beautiful scent this is classic this is timeless and to all of you guys who I persuaded to buy this in 2020 thank you for letting me know that you enjoy it because I really enjoy this scent as well so this is Nomad from Chloe so these next five fragrances I'm gonna kind of have to speed through because my battery's about to die so yeah it's gonna seem a little bit rushed because it is so the next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you guys about about is one that I find to be extremely bright extremely happy and uplifting and this is Delina La Rose now just to preface you guys I really enjoy Parfums de Marly I own a lot of their fragrances but I want to grow my collection more because they have some fragrances from the masculine collection that I really enjoy but this fragrance is one that I think is extremely timeless I think that Delina is too polarizing and so is Delina exclusive even though I absolutely love Delina exclusive but Delina La Rose to me is one that is their classic like this is a classic timeless scent it is a bit on the like younger side I would say because for me Delina is sexy and Delina exclusive is even sexier but Delina La Rose is so underrated in my opinion this fragrance is just a very beautiful bright rose watery aquatic scent it also has a bit of fruitiness to it as well and it has a little bit of a musky touch so you get this like fresh slightly clean smelling scent but you also get the you know fruitiness from the lychee you get the rose that signature delina rose and i really enjoy this scent but this scent to me is more classic it's more timeless it's a little bit more wearable especially in the spring and summer for those who don't like to smell too much of anything if you like to smell fresh clean but a little bit fruity and a little bit floral you would love this scent i feel like delina is a little bit too dramatic for those who are jumping into niche fragrances but also that rhubarb note can really turn people off and then with delina exclusive some people say it's too powdery for them so i think that this is just a nice balance and you still get that delina dna and this one is a little bit more digestible for the masses i think so this is delina la rose from the house of parfums de marley and i think that this is a classic now hopping into this next fragrance people might disagree with me but I think that this fragrance is timeless and this is C the original Eau de Parfum from the house of Giorgio Armani now this fragrance is one that all the youtubers loved back in the early 2010s and people could not stop talking about it but this fragrance is that chick I think so if you guys are tired of hearing about black opium which I love or good girl from Carolina Herrera like those deep date night scents I think that you'll really like C 
like the original C. I really enjoy the C Fiore, but they have discontinued that fragrance, unfortunately. But this is still available. And I do want to try the new Intense version because I heard that the Intense version is even better. So I do want to go ahead and get my hands on that. But from what I have in my collection, I think C is the perfect, perfect classic timeless fragrance from the Armani line. So this scent to me is just a woody vanilla. It has this like warm spiciness to it as well. So this scent opens up with some cassis and for me I really didn't like that. To me that kind of came off like a cat pee type of vibe. It's so weird but now that I've had it in my collection and I've worn it for a long time I really don't get that anymore but when you first smell it you might get that cat pee type of vibe from the cassis. But then as the fragrance dries down you get that rose and that freesia and then you get to the base where you get the beautiful beautiful vanilla you get that ambroxan which adds kind of like this i don't want to say freshness but kind of in a way and then you get some patchouli of course so this fragrance overall is just a beautiful scent i do think that this is a timeless scent i think that this is a recognizable scent so if you've smelt it like you kind of recognize it but I think that this is beautiful. This makes my skin smell like my skin but better in a sweeter, warmer, earthier way. Like it's just beautiful. I really enjoy this fragrance especially for date night. This is definitely a compliment getter. If you have a partner who's very simple and they don't want you to do too much with your fragrance, this will definitely please them. So this is sweet enough but it's not too sweet. It's woody enough to still have some depth and a little bit of character and this also has a little bit of earthiness from that patchouli so it also gives it depth but it also kind it gives it like a sex appeal so this is a beautiful classic timeless fragrance in my opinion and this is C Eau de Parfum now this next fragrance is probably another polarizing one just because of the note like the centric note of this fragrance and this is one I haven't spoken about on my channel in like a few months but I still love it I still enjoy it and this is Tuberous Imperial from BDK this fragrance is absolutely beautiful this is of course heavy on the tuberose and tuberose is a note that a lot of people get turned off by because it it is associated with more mature women because it is a white floral that's very potent, okay? But the tuberose in this fragrance to me is a buttery tuberose. It's very full and well bloomed. It's just beautiful, but it is complemented with the sweeter touches of the scent. So this fragrance, like I said, is just a beautiful white floral. You get some sweetness from some vanilla. This has some yellow florals. It has a little bit of a powdery touch to it as well, along with some woodiness. And overall, this fragrance is stunning. The performance is incredible. I really enjoyed the house of BDK and I do have a BDK house review coming up next week actually so be on the lookout for that but this fragrance is stunning it opens up kind of aromatic and like rosy and then when it starts to dry down you definitely get that tube rose but you also get a little bit of a powdery touch from the iris you get a little bit of a yellow floral touch from the ylang ylang but then going into the dry down you get that vanilla you get that very warm and cozy cashmere which I love in fragrances you also get some benzoin and some patchouli so those notes are just amazing they really tell you what the fragrance is gonna smell like and the benzoin to me isn't too much but you definitely can smell it it gives it that resinous touch that benzoin gives but with a little bit of sweetness so I really enjoy this fragrance this is extremely timeless in my opinion I feel like all ages can wear this and this to me screams elegance this smells like it's sophisticated but also approachable this isn't too mature but this isn't like a juvenile fragrance whatsoever so this is Tuberus Imperial from the house of BDK this next fragrance kind of gives me the same vibes that Tuberus Imperial has but it doesn't have the same notes and this is Dolce & Gabbana the only one intense and if it weren't for my girl Maria aka it's MJ I probably would have never picked this fragrance up and also Bex Rebecca Coyazo like those are my girls they love this fragrance and I really think that this gives me like Tuberus Imperial vibes but it's not the same so if you want a designer version or a less expensive version but it still smells expensive this is the way to go for sure so this scent is a beautiful beautiful white floral heavy fragrance but it's sweet from some vanilla it has some coconut it has some woodiness but it also has this like warmth to it as well I really enjoy this fragrance overall so when this fragrance opens up it really opens up citrusy to me you get some neroli along with some orange and then when the fragrance starts to dry down you get some orange blossom some jasmine and some coconut and I find that the coconut adds creaminess to this fragrance kind of has it leaning a little bit more gourmand slightly like Tuberous Imperial I do find that scent to be a little bit gourmand leaning 
cleaning as well because of how like delectable it is but it's still heavy on the white floral and then in the base you get that beautiful cedar that amazing cashmerean like I'm a sucker for cashmerean and you also get some vanilla so the base is like very warm it's enveloping it's very nice and cozy but it also has some depth from that cedar it has some sweetness from the vanilla so overall this fragrance is stunning like I said if you want more of an affordable version of tuberous imperial but it's not the same like it gives you that vibe then I say check this one out but if you're good with tuberose or if you really love tuberose definitely check out tuberous imperial because it's stunning but Dolce and Gabbana the only one intense is amazing I'm so happy that I have this in my collection I do have the original the only one and they're completely different so if y'all want to review let me know but this is the only one intense from Dolce and Gabbana and this is a classic classic and timeless smelling fragrance in my collection. Woo, we getting through this. Okay, so <laughs> this next fragrance is one that I absolutely love and I feel like everyone should have this scent in their collection no matter what your gender is, no matter what your age is. This fragrance is just amazing to me. It's stunning. It is on the expensive side, but it's beautiful. And this is Ball de Freak from the House of Byredo. I know Dossier has an inspired fragrance of this one and I want to get it just so I can give you guys a review like comparing them. But Ball de Freak is a nice aromatic woody fragrance it has a little bit of a powdery touch it has a little bit of a fruity touch but overall I just get this earthy woody citrusy aromatic scent I really enjoy this fragrance this is very addictive this smells like I'm in Italy and all white my hair is just flowing like this I have a little braid out or whatever just looking smelling feeling great this is effortlessly beautiful but you still look put together like your makeup is very minimal if you do wear makeup or you know you just look very minimal hydrated healthy but you smell great like that's what this scent is. So this fragrance opens up with a beautiful black currant note along with some citruses. And then when the fragrance starts to dry down, you get some jasmine, you get some powdery violet, which like I said earlier, I'm really starting to enjoy violet and fragrances. And then in the base, you get some vetiver, some cedar, and some amber. And I really, really enjoy this fragrance. Like I think that overall, this fragrance is beautiful. Like it's nice. It's not too much of anything. And that's why I find this scent to be extremely gender fluid. And I think that's why this fragrance is popular. I think that this just smells great and I find that this scent is very timeless so I don't think that this fragrance will really age at all so this is by Rado's Ball de Freak and again I think that this is a timeless classic stunning scent now last but certainly not least we have one that is one I haven't spoken about in a while again just because this isn't the time for this scent but I do find this to be very timeless and classic and just effortless and this is Elang and Gold from the house of M. Mikalef and I have been loving No Tevini, but to me No Tevini is a little bit more polarizing than Elang and Gold. This scent is just literally effortless they have a nectar version which is like the more intense version and it's smaller but it does pack a punch so a little bit goes a long way with that one but this fragrance the original Ylangin Gold is beautiful. First of all, the bottle, stunning. The juice is like, has like gold flecks in it. And when you spray it on your skin, the gold flecks just reflect off of your skin. Oh my gosh. But this is a yellow floral centric fragrance. So to my nose, this is a beautiful coconutty, sweet yellow floral. It also has a little bit of a lactonic touch to it and also a little bit of a powdery touch to it as well. But overall, this fragrance is really, really heavy on the lang and really heavy on the coconut, but it has this creaminess to it that gives you that lactonic vibe. This fragrance opens up with a ton of notes, but all in all, this is just a very fruity scent in the opening. Very warm, very cozy. But when the fragrance starts to dry down, that's when you you get that Elang, you get some magnolia, you get some sandalwood, which also adds to that creaminess. And then in the base, you get that coconut along with that vanilla. So this is Elang and Gold by Amika Leff, and this is a timeless, stunning scent. All right, y'all, so I'm kind of rushing this in part because my battery is literally flashing. So thank you guys for watching today's video. If you are new to my channel, I do quiz you at the end of all of my videos just to see who's been rocking with me into the end or whatnot. And for today's video, I want you guys to leave me the ring emoji because this video is about timeless fragrances and a diamond is timeless so leave me the diamond ring emoji so that I know you guys made it until the end again I thank you so so much for clicking on this video and watching it to this point I truly appreciate you guys to support I love you guys so 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 much and I will see you all in the next one oh, baby,